Thanks everyone for sticking around. So I guess like one question, one more kind of crowd participation question. Does everyone, who holds ETH here? Just, just curious. Show hands. You don't have to tell me your private keys or anything, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so for everyone who holds ETH, uh, I guess Edgeware is a little bit for you. Um, but, no slides. That's okay, we can start. Um, so I'm Dylan, I'm one of the co-founders of uh, a company called Commonwealth Labs, and basically we're, we're based out of New York, uh, in San Francisco, actually pretty distributed. Uh, we'd love to have someone from the team uh, come over from Asia, or actually join the team from Asia, and then we'll, we'll cover literally all uh, time zones uh, and make uh, those Monday meeting calls a little more difficult. Um, but yeah, we, we do want to bridge kind of all the geographies um, and all the communities, essentially. Um, and that's a little bit of what Edgeware is about. Um, so Edgeware is one of the projects uh, at Commonwealth Labs. Commonwealth Labs, again, based on New York, we're focused on governance. Uh, as, as Ryan mentioned before, governance is uh, a long and tough topic. If you've been on Twitter, there's been a lot of back and forth, a lot, a lot of memeing, a lot of joking around. And uh, what we hope Edgeware is, is a kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a silver bullet, but um, answers a lot of the questions that um, uh, Ryan, Gav, and Jahan post, uh, kind of the vitriol. Uh, behind these other committees. Oh, yeah. That's I guess if you if you want to follow us, that's that's my Twitter handle. That's my email. Uh, hey, Edgeware on Twitter as well. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so what is Edgeware? I'll, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, probably in like ten minutes or so. Um, <laughs> drum roll, please. No, 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 drum roll. Um, <laughs> you can scroll down. So Gav knows a little bit about this. Uh, Edgware is a little bit ta uh, like a town, I actually know a district in Greater London. Um, this is the first search result on Google right now. So Edgware has a little bit of the ways to go uh, for publicity. Um, so please uh, like, rate, sweet, tweet, subscribe uh, to uh, Edgware. Uh, but for our purposes, Edgware is essentially, next slide please. Edgware is a, is a few things. Um, so it's dev friendly because we want a lot of uh, community participation and experimentation, something that Ryan talked about before. Uh, we want to distribute 90% of the tokens to the community. Uh, that means ETH holders specifically, and we're doing this through a thing called the lock drop. And again, uh, hopefully from, from the points that Gab and Ryan and Jahan brought up, um, a lot of it comes down to allocating tokens to uh, the, the right individuals, uh, not just block, uh, block producers or validators, but also developers, core devs, uh, DAP devs, um, and anyone else. And so, Edgeware is actually a, a smart contract platform. It is a parachain, and it gains from the, the scalability uh, that uh, Ryan and Gav talked about before. Yeah, it's the same slide. Dev friendly. All right. So, uh, we showed, I guess we showed uh, hands before. Um, it doesn't seem that too many of you guys are developers, but uh, a short intro on WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is the, the te technology where you can build smart contracts in on um, Edgeware. Essentially what WebAssembly is, is a binary format. And so you can build smart contracts in JavaScript, TypeScript, C, C++, Go, Rust, whatever client implementations um, are out there for Substrate. Uh, and you can build those smart contracts in, in the languages that you're comfortable with. Uh, a big reason for this is just because uh, blockchains aren't just for people in this room, right? Uh, we do want to reach all the uh, those like financial towers over there, uh, JP Morgan uh, specifically. Uh, <laughs> sorry, don't mean to call them out. Um, and you know, it outside of finance, uh, government, it really has the potential to um, interact um, kind of with all sectors of society. And so we do want to impact and reach those. Um, and so having the tooling available to make it uh, comfortable for any developer to use is a is a big target for us. And beyond that, uh, we're built on Substrate. And so uh, what that allows us is kind of a clear roadmap and uh, allows um, Edgeware itself uh, to be clearly governable. And I won't actually go too deep into that. I think you guys heard enough about that. But again, Commonwealth Labs, we, we want to focus on the governance stuff. So beyond the um, democracy and council modules that Ryan gave a brief overview of, we built signaling and identity. And those are gasless transactions. Um, and so we do make use of uh, Substrate itself. And so um, Edgeware itself has gasless transactions and you can also build um, smart contracts on it. As I mentioned before, so th this is just, yeah, I usually go a little more in depth, but 
Uh, so it's all built on Substrate, and from uh, Parity, Web3, the whole um, ecosystem building on Substrate. As, as Ryan mentioned before, there's about 20, 20-ish 20, 20 projects working on it, and it built with this tool stack. And so what we do, identity, um, linking an identity, so that's uh, a Twitter address, a GitHub handle, um, or a Telegram handle, uh, handle, I don't even know, uh, to your Edgeware address or your ETH address. So you can actually, in the governance process, know who's participating. So you can actually see who's trolling, who's not, who actually holds them out or not. We're actually building things on top of that, so anonymous voting. So when you do link your ETH address or your Edgeware address, you don't have to actually reveal your identity. You can do that in an anonymous manner. Um, and beyond this, um, you actually can vote on the different proposals. It has a DAO, it inherits all that from Substrate itself. Cool, so we talked about the first thing. And so the second thing, it's, <laughs> I need to make the building a little more. Uh, tokens distributed to the community. And so that's to ETH holders specifically. And so we're giving away 90% of tokens to the community. Um, and all you have to do, we're calling it the lock drop. Um, uh, we haven't trademarked it yet obviously, uh, so please you know, talk about it to everyone you can. Uh, we do want to basically incentivize ETH holders to participate, to bridge those ecosystems, right? Because blockchains themselves are non-zero-sum, right? They're governing commons, and so I think a lot of the vitriol that we've seen even recently is, is kind of productive, right? We, we want to bring this technology forth and not just for maybe a specific ecosystem. And so what you do, you time lock your Ethereum, uh, you have a separate um, contract that it holds it in, for three months, six months, or 12 months, and you get your ETH back at the end of that, and you get Edgeware tokens at the uh, launch date of Edgeware. And so we want active participants to participate. So this is kind of like lock schedule. So for three months, you'll get you know, basically you know, the par amount. Uh, for six months, you'll get a little bonus. Uh, for 12 months, you'll get an even larger bonus. And uh, there's actually this thing called the signal um, and basically what you do is you sign a carbon vote style transaction, and essentially you'll get your um, Edgeware tokens 12 month, months post uh, Edgeware launch, but you don't have to essentially put um, ETH at opportunity cost. Again, we're doing this because, get on this, Thanks. yeah. We're doing this because we want to incentivize active participants, uh, not just people who do have a lot of ETH, right? It's, this is not an ICO, it's not an airdrop. We actually want people to put skin in the game and participate in the ecosystem. Um, I definitely want to hammer that home. It's, it's really important for us. Cool. And so uh, the community governed block reward. So 50% these are the economics of Edgeware. So uh, the first year there's 20% inflation. Um, that's actually tied to a specific edge amount. And so in the second year, of course this is also changeable by governance, um, it'll drop to around 16%. And the next year, 12, 12.5. Um, and so 50% of that 20% block reward in the first year will fund a treasury. And so all the developers, anyone who's interacting with the platform uh, can get some of this. They can send a proposal uh, and it should work like a doubt. So yeah, it, uh, Democracy Council, that's the self that uh, Ryan talked about, signaling. So there's non-binding votes that can happen. Those are tied to an identity. Uh, so you can actually see, hey, uh, uh, Ryan or Gav talked about a specific proposal, and then we'll move it forward to, to something that the democracy or the council can participate in. Don't need to talk about that. It's already covered. This is kind of a V1 of uh, what our um, governance interface looks like. Uh, it's a product problem, right? Governance is, a, is a largely like, uh, it comes down to like who's voting and how they vote. And the ways for people to participate in voting is not that easy right now. You'll have to sign something from a command line interface. Um, it's, it's really unintuitive. And given the open participation um, within the lock drop, we want everyone to participate even if they're not a developer. And so it kind of looks like GitHub. You can see the proposals. You can see all the votes that happen. And uh, here's one specific proposal. Yes, soak it in. Yes, yeah. He's going to be an Edgeware holder, for sure. Cool. And uh, so why build on the Edgeware? So this is, you know, Ryan and Gab talked about this at length. Um, so it's permissionless. It's the permissionless zone for you to prototype on uh, uh, Polkadot. Um, we've already had a lot of ETH holders actually, actually large, like the OG projects on Ethereum, um, 
you can look them up. Uh, there's uh, Aragon, uh, Gnosis Colony, all these other people. They want to participate on Edgeware. They want to build smart contracts on Edgeware um, and participate in the lock drop as well because they, they see the value of this permissionless zone, especially for, for things focused around governance. And so scalable and secure, you can experiment easily with the Polkadot ecosystem. And uh, you should join our testnet. So we, and, and this is kind of a, uh, to talk about how easy it is to develop on Polkadot uh, slash substrate. We announced, um, so Gab did a presentation and then we, we talked about Edgeware. And so that was in October. I think we had a, a testnet up and running in November with all the core features, all the modules that we had. Um, we just gone through audits on the lock drop. We've gone through audits on the governance stuff and we're targeting a launch on June 1st. And so that's the lock drop. And right after the lock drop, since everything is already audited, we'll be able to, to, to basically spin up the network. Um, and that's just a testament, again, to how easy it is to, to build on Substrate. Cool, yeah. Edgeware lock drop happening June 1st. You can get more updates. We're actually uh, localizing a lot of our content. Um, my Chinese is really bad. I can't speak Cantonese, but we'd love someone to, to translate it um, into those languages. We have, it's coming in Korean and Japanese as well. Uh, you can get in touch with us at founders at commonwealth.im or follow us on Twitter at Hey Edgeware. All right, thank you guys.